In this study, we'll be searching for God's fingerprints of creation in the very Torah text itself. By the end of this video, in under 10 minutes, you will learn a code that very few, if anybody, on this planet know about. So if I were to sit with a scientist, and if I asked them, hypothetically speaking, if God had a symbol or a thumbprint, a fingerprint of his existence, of his presence in the world of nature, in the universe, what might that symbol be? Well, most probably the scientist would say a spiral if he really put his thoughts to it because the spiral is a shape and design that is found throughout the universe, the physical universe, everything from the smallest uh, molecular DNA or the double strand DNA um, to the cosmos, the galaxies, and uh, we see the spiral in every aspect of creation. Now, if I were to ask a mathematician the same thing, he would probably agree with the scientist, except he would give a mathematical formula to support the symbol of the spiral, and that would be known as the golden ratio. What if I were to look for God's fingerprints in the Bible itself, in the Torah? Where, what part of the Torah would I look in to find God's thumbprints or evidence of his existence? And the most obvious choice would be the book of Genesis. What part of the book of Genesis? The opening chapters of Genesis, which talk about the creation itself. Now, what words might I want to look at in the opening chapters of Genesis? Well, there's two words that come to mind. One is called the tree of life. In Hebrew, Eitz HaChayim. It is in chapter 2 of Genesis. reason I choose this is because this is the choice of the Kabbalists to describe how the universe came into being, how the universe operates, how the universe and every segment within the universe is designed and how they, the different segments interact with each other. So surely we want to look at the phrase Eitz HaChayim, not only because it is a map of the cosmos themselves, and all aspects of creation within the cosmos. But in fact, if you look at this diagram of the tree of life, it's actually only flat. It looks flat for the purpose of our study, our vantage point. But in reality, the Kabbalists say this entire diagram with the 10 different emanations, this entire shape is actually a spiral. And so if we were to look at it in, in its true form, it would be an energy that travels from the above to the below or the below to the above in a spiral pattern. The next word I want to look at, and in a moment I'm going to tell you why I'm choosing these words and what exactly we'd be doing with these words to support the evidence of God's fingerprints in the creation, right? So the second choice of words is in a verse right before where the tree of life is found, and it is the word Kedem. Now if you look at the first line at the, towards the end, it says, And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Okay, well, first, without getting too deep into it in this lecture, we're going to have a different lecture, a different study on what this verse means, studying it from the original Hebrew with all the Kabbalistic tools and understanding. But just so you know that the Garden of Eden never took place in the physical world. Okay, this is a higher dimension, and in this dimension, man was formed, not created, because there's four different verbs for the creation of man, because man goes through four dimensions. 
right? And in this dimension, he's not created, but only formed. And it's an astral dimension, a non-physical dimension, and called the world of formation, literally, Olam Yetzira. But what's interesting about this verse is the word in the East, because it really doesn't belong there. There is no sense of direction in a non-physical world that is a higher dimension. And even if we were to literally talking about the physical world, why do we need to know in the East? What, what information does that word provide us? In the East, in Hebrew, is kedem. It's the second word we want to look at. Now, one of the things about the word kedem is it has more than one meaning. Besides in the East, it means the beginning, what happened before. In fact, in this context, it means the beginning of all beginnings. In other words, the primordial beginning. Because we say when we talk about Adam, the first being, the, when Adam was created, he was created as a soul before he descended and took on the garments of flesh and blood and became a physical being. He was a spiritual being, a primordial Adam, the Kabbalists call. And the word in Hebrew, the term for primordial Adam is Adam Kadmon. Kadmon is Arabic for uh, Aramaic for Kedem primordial man. So we can take a word and we can look at the numerical value of that word for further insight into the essence of what that word might actually mean or phrase in the, in the Torah. So it, we just took out two phrases. We took out the word Eitz HaChayim, tree of life, and we took out the word Kedem, which means the primordial beginning, right? If you take the word Eitz HaChayim, you have the numerical value of 233. If you take the word Kedem, you have the numerical value of 144. Take these two numbers, divide 233 divided by 144, and what do you get? Voila, the golden ratio, right there in the text. Nobody really knows why nature repeats this spiral shape in different formations that exist throughout the universe, as in galaxies, in organic molecules and DNA, and in biological organisms. What we do know is that embedded in nature is the language of mathematics, and Kabbalah has long asserted that the energy of the spiral, called the tree of life, is the fundamental pattern on which all life and all creation is modeled. What we have witnessed in this presentation is the marriage between Torah and science, Kabbalah and mathematics. What we attempted to demonstrate was that the underlying scientific form of the physical universe is indeed hinted to in the original paradise of Genesis, the Torah's book of beginnings. If you're interested in this kind of learning, if you're interested in this kind of deep wisdom from Jewish mystics in understanding the Genesis text, and in my opinion, there's no other way to understand the opening chapters of Genesis but through the eyes of Kabbalah and the 70 levels of understanding that Judaism uh, applies to understanding text. And so I would strongly suggest that you subscribe to our channel so you're not a stranger, so you don't miss out on the upcoming series of Unlocking the Secrets of Genesis. We're gonna be taking different verses, different words, this different terminology, so you finally get the real picture. You finally get the true, true, true story of what these chapters are actually talking about. We're not supposed to be understanding them as literal history. In fact, there's a warning by the Kabbalists themselves not to understand this literally as a, as, as a literal story on the surface level. 
So please don't be a stranger. Let's keep in touch. Subscribe to the channel so that you can be prepared for a phenomenal upcoming series about unlocking Genesis secrets. Take care, stay healthy, stay well, and most importantly, folks, keep the faith. <laughs>